Committee Subcommittee will come to order. Welcome Ranking Member Marchant, members of the subcommittee, and hearing witnesses, and all of those in attendance. Welcome to the Federal Workforce Postal Service and the District of Columbia Subcommittee hearing on H.R. 3268, the Government Accountability Office GAO Act of 2007. The hearing will examine H.R. 3268, the Government Accountability Office GAO Act of 2007, and various other legislative proposals that may be introduced before the hearing that address certain GAO reforms. It will also examine the results of the survey I requested last May that the Employee Advisory Council conduct of all GAO employees on the Band II restructuring and the Watson Wyatt Compensation Study and the Ivy Group Study. Here, no objection, the Chair, Ranking Member, and Subcommittee members will each have five minutes to make opening statements, and all members will have three days to submit statements for the record. Today, the Government Accountability Office, GAO, has an opportunity. It has an opportunity to regain its footing as an agency that not only touts that its employees are the best and the brightest, but treats them as if they are the best and the brightest. GAO has an opportunity to hold itself to the same standards of accountability and forthrightness that it demands of other agencies. GAO has an opportunity to work with, not against the subcommittee, when it raises legitimate concerns about its personnel reforms and other issues pertaining to the administration of the agency. It appears that GAO is going to seize this opportunity. I have met with Mr. Gene Dodaro, the Acting Comptroller General, and he has indicated that he intends to work collaboratively with the subcommittee to address any concerns that we have, and the subcommittee is committed to doing the same. Mr. Dodaro has over 30 years of service with GAO, and I hope he will restore GAO's legacy as a model agency. Mr. Dodaro, welcome to your first hearing as Acting Comptroller General of the United States. That said, after two years of investigating GAO's personnel reforms, the subcommittee has unfinished business to address. I am pleased to announce that I will be introducing legislation that restores the 2006 and 2007 across-the-board increase to all GAO employees who met expectations but did not receive it. The bill also includes a provision that establishes an across-the-board floor guarantee that will govern how pay adjustments are to be administered at GAO in the future. The legislation has the support of GAO and its union, the International Federation of Professional and Technical Engineers. While the subcommittee is pleased that the proposal has the support of GAO, it is unfortunate that it took two years of employees being demoralized and worrying about their pay before we received it. Last winter, the best and the brightest at GAO finally had to vote to unionize to get management's attention. The compromise legislation, which will be discussed today, will be introduced and marked up when Congress returns from the March re recess. In November of 2007, at my request, members of GAO's Employee Advisory Council surveyed all GAO employees on GAO's personnel reforms. 71% of GAO employees responded to the survey, and we will hear testimony about the results of that survey today. Another troublesome issue that the subcommittee will continue to address at future hearings is the historic disparity between the ratings of African Americans and their Caucasian counterparts at GAO. At a hearing, the subcommittee held in November of 2007 on diversity in legislative branch agencies, Ron Stroman, Managing Director of GAO's Office of Opportunity and Inclusiveness, testified that he alerted David Walker that if GAO went through with its personnel reform or ban to restructuring, 
that it would have a negative impact on African Americans. When pressed as to why GAO would go through with a restructuring that it knew would adversely impact African Americans, Mr. Stroman state, stated it was a decision that the Comptroller General made. Last August, almost a year and a half after the restructuring took place, GAO hired the Ivy Group to research the rating disparities between African American and Caucasian employees at GAO. The Ivy Group will not complete its final report until next month. However, what they have learned to date is troubling and raises serious questions about GAO's performance management system. Mr. Walker officially resigned from GAO yesterday. Therefore, the question of why he moved forward with the restructuring, given the disparity in ratings, cannot be posed to him directly. Nevertheless, the subcommittee will continue its oversight of this issue and is pleased that Mr. Dodaro has indicated that he is committed to addressing the problem. I thank you, all of you who have come, and look forward to hearing from the witnesses. And now it's my pleasure to yield such time as he would consume to the ranking member, Mr. Marchant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Government Accountability Office is a critical research arm of the federal government, which we rely on for unbiased, high quality information. This information is frequently instrumental in our legislative process and can determine the course of ongoing oversight and legislation. Last year, the GAO presented a request for legislative improvements to Congress. That request is currently embodied in H.R. 3268, the Government Accountability Act of 2007, which was introduced by Chairman Henry Waxman. This bill would require the Comptroller General to appoint Deputy Com Comptroller General, who shall serve at the Comptroller General's pleasure, establish an office of Inspector General in the GAO, and require the Comptroller, Comptroller General's annual report to Congress to assess the overall degree of federal agency cooperation with GAO audits. The bill would also make certain adjustments to salary rules to increase retention and improve recruitment. I understand, Mr. Chairman, that you are planning to introduce a new legislation that will incorporate the changes described above as well as other changes that are a response to the subcommittee's oversight hearings last year. I look forward to seeing a final version of that new legislation. And as we move forward, I hope that the chairman and members of the committee will be open to some discussion on this legislation. Again, I thank the chairman for holding this hearing and the witnesses for being before us today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Marchant. Um, I see that Mr. Clay has uh, arrived. Uh, Mr. Clay, let me ask, do you have any opening remarks? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Clay. And uh, we will then proceed with witnesses. Uh, it is the committee policy that all witnesses are sworn in, so if you would rise and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? The record will show that the witnesses answered in the affirmative. Gentlemen, of course, you know the uh, usual drill with these. Uh, the green light indicates that you have five minutes in which to summarize your testimony. The full testimony is in the record. Of course, the yellow light means that there's a minute left, and the red light means it's time to uh, stop. So thank you very much. Let me first of all congratulate you, Mr. Dodaro, and uh, indicate that not only are we pleased that you are here today, but I certainly look forward to a solid working relationship over an extended period of time, and we're delighted to work with you and to have you here today. So you may proceed.
Uh, and uh, excuse me, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, be here today to discuss legislative proposals to bolster the ability of GAO to attract and retain a highly skilled and diverse workforce and to help improve our operations. Uh, I also plan to update you on our evolving relationship with our new union and to also underscore my commitment to making sure there's equal and fair treatment for all GAO employees. As backdrop for my remarks, I'd like to uh, point out that over the past several years, there have been many changes at GAO. Some of those changes have strengthened the organizations. Other changes have evoked controversy and in some cases created new challenges. We've addressed some of these challenges, but many remain, and we're committed to working to resolve those challenges in cooperation with our employees and with the subcommittee and other parts of the Congress. Uh, it's important to note, I think, that during this whole time period throughout, the GAO people have continued to produce high quality work for the Congress and generate positive organizational results. And I think this is a real tribute to the professionalism of our workforce and the, their dedication to GAO's mission to support the Congress and, and to improve government for the benefit of the American people. And I'm committed to making sure that GAO not only maintains the high quality of its work to support the Congress, but also to confronting and resolving the challenges that are before us today. Now, the legislative proposals uh, before the subcommittee can help us in this regard. We support the adding of the floor guarantee provision to govern annual pay increases for GAO by adding that to our existing authorities. Under this approach, existing uh, GAO people meeting expectations will at least receive the annual increase for the GS uh, annual adjustment for their locality that they're in. My statement provides details on how this would work. Uh, and uh, uh, bottom line of this floor guarantee provision from our standpoint is this gives our employees greater certainty and a link to the executive branch for pay parity while preserving the incentives and rewards of the GAO performance appraisal system. So we think it's a solid approach uh, and we're looking forward to uh, working uh, with the committee to get this into the legislation. I would also seek the subcommittee's support for our proposal to raise the GS-15 cap to the uh, executive level three level. We think this is very important. Currently, the agencies that are the financial institution regulators, such as FDIC, have this authority to pay higher than the GS-15 cap, as does DOD and DHS. So we are at a real competitive disadvantage by not having uh, this authority, and we need it in order to make sure we have the senior experienced people in order to best serve the Congress. Now turning to some of the operational improvements, uh, there are many uh, in the bill. I'll highlight three right now. Uh, one is the uh, creation of a statutory inspector general to replace our administrative inspector general. It's been in place for a number of years. This would put our inspector general on an equal footing with the inspector generals of other uh, legislative branch agencies uh, and provide an appropriate level of independence and autonomy. Second, we're seeking a requirement where GAO would issue an annual report card on the cooperation that we've received in executive branch agencies in carrying out our audit work in terms of their timely provision of records and access to people needed to complete our work for the Congress. We think this would create greater transparency over the level of cooperation we receive and ultimately lead to more efficient GAO operations and timely services to the Congress. Uh, and lastly, I would, in the uh, operational area, seek your uh, approval of the provision by which we would receive reimbursement for audit costs. I'd quickly like to touch on two uh, other workforce issues. Uh, first, we are committed to working constructively with our new union to have a forge a positive labor management relations uh, environment. Uh, since uh, the union was voted in in September, we have uh, provided a lot of resources and training to create a good environment, and we were pleased to re uh, 
um, negotiate a very prompt agreement with them on pay decisions for 2008. Uh, also, we're committed to ensuring fair and equal treatment for our workforce. As was mentioned, we've commissioned the Ivy Group to come in and do a study. We're looking to them for insights, best practices, and recommendations. We're looking forward to receiving the final report and have committed to following up on the recommendations and keeping this subcommittee apprised of our progress going forward. In closing, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, since this is my first day as uh, Acting Comptroller General, I want to assure uh, this subcommittee that I'm committed to improving GAO and making sure we have the highest quality uh, work possible to support the Congress. Uh, and I am very honored and privileged to lead such a highly skilled and talented workforce at the GAO. And I will be working with them as with this committee. Thank you for your time and attention and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Dodaro. Um, and we certainly look forward to um, all of our follow-up and follow-through. As you know, pay adjustment has been at the top of the discussion list um, for a while now, and the subcommittee staff has been working on a pay adjustment provision for the FY6 and 7 for GAO employees who met expectations but did not receive them. That is, did not receive across the board adjustment for those years. Uh, you've expressed um, some position, but would you reaffirm your views on the retroactive provision that I have included in the legislation that I'm going to introduced to address this problem and also uh, re-articulate for us your views on the across-the-board floor guarantee. I'd be happy to, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, on the uh, 2006 and 2007 uh, payments for those people who didn't receive the across-the-board adjustment, uh, we believe the discussions we've had with the subcommittee have been very fruitful and we've arrived at a practical and uh, reasonable approach for addressing that issue should the Congress decide to legislate on that issue. We are pleased th that it contains the necessary legal authorities and funding uh, authorities uh, for GAO to carry out that provision uh, once enacted. And we would be very pleased uh, to have this issue behind us and moving forward. As it relates to the floor guarantee, we think this is a, a, a really solid approach going forward that preserves the intent of the pay for performance system at GAO, but strikes a better balance with giving our employees some certainty going forward and a link to the executive branch. So we are supportive of these proposals uh, and uh, hope that they are enacted. Thank you very much. Um, as you know, last summer GAO contracted with the Ivy Group to study why African-American employees at GAO were receiving lower ratings than their Caucasian counterparts. The Ivy Groups found that not only were there disparities in the ratings between African-Americans and Caucasians, but that GAO's dropping of two rating competencies in 2004, while not significantly significant, were the two competencies that African Americans performed better on. Um, what do these facts tell us about GAO's performance management system, if anything? And once the Ivy Group completes its final report, what steps do you intend to take to address the concerns raised in the report? First of all, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, this study is very important to GAO, and I am personally committed to making sure that we uh, forthrightly address the recommendations out of the study. Now, the competencies uh, were, were realigned uh, back in 2004, effective for our fiscal 2005 ratings. We went from 12 competencies down to eight. That was largely based on input from our managers and our employee advisory council at that point in time that the new system we had put in place in 2002 was uh, burdensome and there was some overlap in the competencies. 
Now the competencies themselves, uh, the performance standards and work activities were actually merged in with other competencies, so they, they, it wasn't eliminated. Uh, we did not have any reason to believe at that time that it would have a, a negative effect on any particular uh, group, but it was uh, to streamline and the, the system that we had in place at that time and respond to concerns that were fairly broad based at that time in the agency. Now, given the fact that Ivy's already raised this in their, in their task one briefing, uh, you know, we've, we've already asked our human capital people to go back and take a look at what we could do. That competency system was validated by a uh, large number of GAO people, and we may have some ability to make some changes uh, uh, to, to that system. And of course, uh, you know, we'll have to work uh, with the union uh, to make any further changes, but we're already looking at that issue. We're going to have to go and vote, but before I do, let me ask you, um, how do you reconcile GAO's second place position on the best places to work ranking with the concerns employees expressed in the Employee Advisory Council's restructuring survey? Well, the, the best pl places to work survey is based upon OPM questions that are asked throughout the federal government, and then there's comparisons made. And it's questions that we incorporate in a GAO employee feedback survey so that we can be benchmarked against other agencies. They take a, a fairly broad view of the workplace and the workplace environment, uh, and in that score, we do very well. We rank uh, number two in uh, large federal agencies ac across the government. Now, the Employee Advisory Council survey that was conducted was focused on some of the most controversial aspects of our, our changes, which was the pay system and the, and the Bantu restructuring, but it also had a section on organizational climate. And in that section, the results on the issues other than pay uh, were very consistent with what we received in an employee feedback survey. It was also conducted before we reached the agreement with the union on 08 pay adjustments and we developed this floor uh, guarantee approach. And I also think, you know, in retrospect, if we would have had the floor guarantee in place for 2006 and 2007, while we would have had some issues to deal with, they wouldn't have been anywhere near as uh, magnified as they were otherwise. Okay, so the, the, the controversy that sort of existed around those issues in all likelihood help to pull down how people ranked? Uh, in, 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 thi in this particular survey that was just conducted uh, at the committee's request by the Employee Advisory Council, I believe that was a contributing factor. There was, you know, some provision in there that uh, asked about the COLA, and a lot of people felt it was unfair that that wasn't applied to everybody going forward. I'm not saying that would have resolved all the controversies, Mr. Chairman, but I do think it would have reduced the angst. Mr. Keplinger? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I also think that if we are successful in getting the, your uh, legislation passed, it will be responsive to a number of the concerns identified in the uh, EAC survey. Um, and, hope, and, I, and I would add to what uh, Gene said, and I would second it too, I think there's also a, a significant amount of pride amongst our workforce in the work that they do. Uh, and that comes through in uh, these surveys. Um, so hopefully we can deal with the problems that we've had, get those resolved, and move forward. Well, thank you both, gentlemen. We're going to have to recess for a minute and run and vote, and uh, we'll be back.